Hi, all. My name's Kevin. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the new Confluent uh, Kafka rework that I worked on the past couple of weeks. Um, we're moving away from Faust uh, and moving to Confluent just because it's backed by Apache and has a, a nice, very well maintained uh, C backend. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, that, that good? I'll just assume yes. Um, so yes. here, here we have the new in investigator, and then this is an old producer. Um, this is just to show that like they work alongside each other, um, which is a nice feature. So if we uh, go and look at the um, environment variables that we set here, so we set the bootstrap servers, the consumer group, um, and then this is the max poll interval. So that basically um, is a timeout where if we don't pull any messages for a certain amount of time, the uh, app is considered stale slash down um, and it'll throw an error. Um, and then we also have uh, a workflow limit, um, which basically just limits the number of pending workflows that we can have on the server at once uh, per namespace. So that will go to each namespace um, whenever it tries to schedule a workflow and check to see if there uh, are enough like open slots um, to schedule more workflows. So now if we run consumer, um, you see a bunch of warnings. This is just because um, instead of importing, I, I just have to run them to, uh, I don't import, I just run the modules because that's how the uh, handler uh, functions are um, added. They don't need to be imported. Um, so now we can go and look and see that here. We see that all of these new solvers are running as um, different uh, packages are going missing or new uh, hashes. So this is, this is the package update job, which looks for uh, different information changing on Python package indexes. Um, this will take a second to start actually producing message. These are leftover ones um, from when I was testing earlier because um, it produces a lot faster than we consume um, just because this is the cron job that runs uh, periodically. Um, and the more often we run it, the less the less we should have to worry about uh, scheduling uh, too much. Um, so that's basically the consumer. Um, not much has changed in terms of the like functionality. Um, but if we want, I can go into the uh, some of the details of how uh, the new consumer works. Uh, so if we go to um, Wrong one. I'm in the wrong. That's the wrong file. If we go into consumer.py, so um, here we have uh, two separate um, coroutines. Uh, one is the actual consumer, um, which is almost a misnomer because what it does is consume messages from Kafka um, and add them to an async queue. Um, we can adjust the size of that queue based off of uh, an environment variable if we need to. Right now it's set at 10. Uh, and then we have workers, which is also something that we can uh, adjust based on an environment variable. The default is five, so we have five workers pulling these messages from the async queue um, and then scheduling uh, messages based off of a handler lookup table. Um, so to register a new uh, handler for a uh, message, we can go and look at one of the uh, investigate prop. We'll look at the investigate provenance checker uh, trigger. So here we see that we have our um, decorators for um, metrics, which are exceptions and in progress. Um, and then we have this new decorator that I created in common um, where you basically have the, you register the handler by giving a topic name and then the versions that you want this 
function to handle. So we could add, uh, if we wanted this to also handle version two of the message, sorry, my computer is being slow, which happens when I have too many things running. Uh, come on. Did I seriously? Um, and then if we want to register a one, then we can be uh, v1 or v2. We could do at register handler. Um, and then same name and then have uh, version three here, maybe. Um, and then we could uh, async def handler two, um, and then basically pass the same arguments um, and do whatever you want for the the new message um, in that second uh, function. So that's basically it. Um, the the changes on the producer side aren't as interesting. Basically, what's going to happen there is wherever we produce messages. Um, we'll just use a uh, produce function that's provided in thought messaging, um, and it everything becomes regular Python uh, uh, rather than Faust. Uh, uh, what's it called? Applications. So that's all. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free. Yes. Um, did you switch from from a topic-based versioning scheme to a message-based one at the same time? Yes, I did. Yeah. So okay. so now so, now those versions are in the message contents. Okay. So we have one topic for the provenance check uh, trigger stuff. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the one topic, and there is different versions, or there might be different version of mes message formats on that topic. Yeah, and then basically when we go and look, we have this, where is it? We have a function lookup somewhere. Where did I put it? There's a there's a function lookup um, where it basically looks for the value to, uh, um, it, it looks for the, the function in the handler table to use based on the version in the message. Okay, and um, I think you you scrolled by um, the metrics are still the same because uh, they are not yep. uh, related with Faust anyways. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, and then there's also another coroutine which basically just handles web requests. So that's the health and metrics um, using AIO HTTP. Is that a custom okay. that... decorator? Uh, the register handle. Oh uh, yeah, it is. The word. Yeah, I can show it right here. Um, so this is register handler. So basically, it goes and it grabs um, handler table, which is found in uh, right here. So it creates the base handler table, which basically goes and takes every single topic name um, in all messages um, right. and makes it an empty dictionary. Um, and then when you register, it'll go and add um, entries into that handler table. Right, so the incoming message does not have the right version number, then go on error. Yep, so yeah, that's, that's something I need to add. Um, it should just error out right now because I'm not doing a git, so it should uh, have issues because we look here. Um, it just says handler table yeah. topic name version. So if that version doesn't exist, it'll throw an error. Yeah. yeah. But uh, don't we want the behavior that uh, new messages just stay on the topic and don't get consumed? That is what we implement by that error, right? Because we don't act the Kafka message itself. Right. So so things will stop getting consumed from that topic because it needs to it needs to act in order. So if if something can't get act, then it'll get stuck. Exactly. Right now, I think the, the investigator might go down. Um, but what we can do instead, if um, the the lookup fails, we can uh, unsubscribe from the message topic. 
um, is something you can do with Confluent Kafka. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the operational theory behind that is if we see that there is a bunch of messages piling up that don't get acknowledged, we have a problem in, in our yeah. software without seeing any error messages or something. We just monitor and figure out, oh, it's a lot of messages not being processed right now. Yeah. So I actually forgot to set one environment variable, um, which basically is auto commit. Um, so by default, um, Confluent Kafka will commit messages on like a schedule. Um, I think it's every like five seconds or something. Um, even if, uh, so that's basically just based on this poll here. So if a message is polled and then five seconds later, that message will be committed. But you can set it so that um, we don't auto commit messages um, so that we end up using line 123 here. Uh, C.commit commit is the only way of committing messages, uh, which we should definitely do because otherwise, there'll be no way of making sure that the function finishes running. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, thanks. Um, even though I like Faust, because I think it's a very Pythonic way of doing all that Kafka messaging, um, the Confluence um, one seems to be a better framework somehow, at least. It, it feels more effort. powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the migration effort is nice even though it talks to the quality of both frameworks. Cool, um, any other questions from any other people? Thank you, Kevin, I'm gonna stop recording.